Hey YouTube, Chad Anderson here, here to bring you this week's very special notable beer. This is a beer we've been working on for a while. Uh, it started off as a kind of weird concept. You guys may have had it on draft as directionally challenged. It's not the exact same beer as that, but conceptually it's the same intended style of beer. This is a beer style that like a lot of other IPA styles, isn't really recognized as an official style, but we're kind of coining it for the sake of seeing if it will take hold. This is our Southeastern IPA called True Grit. Now, I'm sure you guys are aware of the really prevalent uh, New England style IPA or Northeastern style IPA style that's, that's been going around. Uh, and there's also you know the West Coast style IPAs and arguably the East Coast style IPAs. But a lot of people don't realize that like as far as judging criteria is concerned, those things don't really exist. They're not they're not considered true styles. There is no West Coast IPA style when it comes down to the Great American Beer Festival competition or the World Beer Cup uh, competitions and stuff like that. It's just American IPA and there's English IPA and there's Imperial IPA and, and like like Imperial Red Ale, which is kind of like an Imperial Red IPA and Session IPA, things like that. Um, so these are kind of more so just market specific terms and whatnot. And uh, the New England IPAs have been really fun and cool to, to see them take form. And this beer is kind of like a, a reiteration, so to speak, of that with a Southeastern twist on it. So normally when you look at New England or Northeastern style IPAs, uh, there's a very large bit of the grist that is uh, protein heavy adjunct grains. So you have your base grains that give you most of your, your foundation alcohol. Uh, that's stuff like two row and Maris Otter and things like that. Uh, and then the adjunct grains are stuff that aren't actually malted barley at all. They're usually things like torrified wheat, wheat malt, uh, rye, oats, things of that nature. And those really heavy protein grains give a really heavy mouthfeel and thickness to the beer and also add a lot of uh, protein haze and things like that. Very similar to when you see a Hefeweizen, it's a lot of wheat that's in a Hefeweizen. Usually at least 50% of the grain bill on a Hefeweizen is wheat of some sort and therefore that's why you get a lot of like that hazy character to it. Um, and also when you have New England style or Northeastern style IPAs, you tend to have very little to no bittering additions whatsoever in them and a really large amount of late additions and really heavy dry hopping and usually some sort of like an English uh, yeast for it. So with the Southeastern IPA and specifically True Grit, it's taking the kind of mainframe of a New England IPA and putting it in with a southeastern twist. One of the first things you'll notice with this beer is that it's a little bit lower alcohol than your average IPA would be. It's around five to five and a half percent alcohol. So it's pretty light ABV wise, which is great for the southeastern culture because it gets pretty hot here pretty quickly. Uh, and we want to be able to have something a little bit more refreshing and not so heavy. So that's kind of taken into account for it. The other big thing and where the kind of the name pun comes from is the fact that I replaced the protein heavy adjunct grains with a southern staple grain known as grits. So flaked corn basically is, is what goes in in replacement of the protein heavy grains. Now that corn doesn't add in a ton of protein, it adds in a lot more starch and therefore it doesn't give a hazy clarity to it and more so gives a sharp like crisp finish. So it's a little bit more of a refreshing pop. Another beer style that you may be familiar with that uses the same sort of grain is a Mexican lager. Uh, they tend to use some, some form of of corn or maize or grits uh, and, and that extra starchiness adds a nice crisp pop to the finish, which is both refreshing and also acts almost as the bittering characteristic of the beer itself. So this beer doesn't have a, a strict bittering hop. We do first ward it to give it kind of like an after breath effect of hoppiness with Chinook hops, which is a great resiny hop. And then it's very heavily hopped uh, at the end of the boil and in the whirlpool and in our hop back with uh, Simcoe, Mosaic, Citra, and Centennial hops. A really awesome complex hop characteristic that, uh, that really complements each other and also gives this huge payload of what is kind of known as an Americana sort of hop characteristic. So it's a lot of grapefruit, a lot of citrus character, even a little bit of melon notes. And we ferment it on uh, a, a Berli uh, Burlington yeast, which is kind of a, an English style yeast that gives a little bit more ester character to it. And when it's halfway through fermentation, we dry hop it excessively while fermentation is going on with those same hops that we use at the end of the boil. And then after the beer is done fermenting and it hits its final gravity, we dry hop it again. This beer, even though the name is a pun on kind of what turns into a Southeastern IPA with, with the grits, really should be more focused on the fact that this is the largest hop payload we've ever done with any beer. This beer actually sits with eight pounds of hops per barrel, which is absolutely absurd. It's, it's like over twice 
the amount of hops we use for any other normal hoppier beer. Uh, and you can tell. But so what's great about it is you can smell it from across the table and, uh, and it has this insane uh, profile of awesome grapefruit rind and citrus character to it and the flavor, but it has almost no bittering punch at the finish. It's just a nice, crisp, dry grain sort of character to it, followed up by an afterbreath of a soft, nice, lingering, resiny character. I hope you come down and give it a try, and this one's actually gonna go into cans as well. So go on and get yourself a four pack or two and a little pint to go and give it a try. So consider yourself notified. I might wear an eye patch the entire time just because the True Grit movie is really cool. I'm gonna to try to talk like Jeff Bridges too, but I'll need like 1,700 beers before I can actually get that accent just right. Here's number one. I'm not gonna crush it right now. That's just not really appropriate to do.